Okay, so so many people have asked me how to make the bread I make. So I'm starting out with my starter. Take a look at this, how bubbly that is. I fed that. I threw away all of it except a tablespoon <clears throat> this morning, and then I gave it a cup and a half of uh, water and flour. And now it's ready. It's really alive. And they say the way you know is if, if it floats on the water. So <clears throat> what we need to do now is I've got 700, 700 grams of water I pre-measured here. I'm going to zero out my scale when that stops. Okay. Now we're going to put in 200 grams of the starter. And you can see it's floating. Okay, so 200 grams is going to be around a cup. <gasps> Whoa, too far, too far. Oh, and I had to do this on the film. <laughs> well, I don't think it's going to hurt anything, so forget that. Now, the best thing to do is just make sure it's really dissolved nice inside. So when you put it in the flour, you know, it has some starter in the water. That should be good. Okay, so now I've, I've measured 900 grams of white flour and 100 grams, I use sprouted wheat, but just wheat flour would be good. And what I have is a Danish whisk, and this is really a good tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the starter and water here in the bowl. And now, I'm just going to blend it together as far as I can with this. This is where the, the whisk really comes in handy because this stuff would be all over your hands. And I'm going to actually do it with my hands after I get the majority of it, majority of it uh, blended here. So the concept here for this step is you just want to not see any white flour. You just want to see... A mixture of dough so you keep on mixing so now what I'm going to do is wash my hands <clears throat> and you want to have a wet hand I just use my left hand and I just squeeze it through and this this is the, the best way to really Make sure you got everything mixed well. So while I'm doing this, when we come back, the next step would be to add another 50 grams of water and 20 grams of salt um, to this and do the same thing. Blend it in and then we'll continue from that point. Right now, when I'm finished with this, I have a, a plastic wrap. Looks like a, a hair, uh, hair net that you get from a hotel. And I put that on the top and I just set it on the counter. Or if you want it to work faster, you can put it in the oven with uh, the light on. So it has a, a nice warm temperature around 80, 85 degrees. That makes it rise way quicker. But you don't want to rush, rush the process because the more time, the more flavor you give it. So we can pause this now. Okay, it's been about 40 minutes. And that's the first step. So what I've done here is I mixed 50 grams of water with about 20 grams of salt. And I just combine it and I dump it in here. Then I wet my hand to keep it from sticking to me. And then what I do is just squeeze the salty water through. So basically, by doing this after the fact, you've allowed uh, the starter to work in the flour and start growing. And the salt will inhibit the growth a little bit, but it's got a good start now. So. 
So you just combine all of this, keep on folding it over on itself and pushing down until it's really nicely mixed and squeeze it through so it's definitely going through good. Okay, and then I, at the end, I'll just start folding again, which that's what we're going to do on all the following steps. We'll be just folding, doing what they call turns. So that looks about right. So I'm just going to cover it back and let it uh, set for 30 minutes. It's been a half an hour. No, it's been more like 40 40 minutes. Uh, it doesn't look any different. I'm going to wet my hand. Get it really nice and wet so it doesn't stick. And this is going to be the first turn. So what you do is you grab it and you pull it. And now it doesn't stick to your hands like it did before. It's changing its consistency. And you go all the way around gently. Let it stretch. I think one more time. That's all you have to do. So what happens is this is the beginning of about a uh, three to four hour period. So basically you keep on doing this every 30 minutes. Set a timer. I, I set my iPhone for 30 minutes and you do this every 30 minutes and you'll see the texture starting to change. It'll start rising a little bit. It'll get softer. You'll start seeing bubbles. And when you start seeing bubbles, you know you're getting close. You could actually, at that point, uh, go to the next step. But for now, I don't want to say a, a specific number of hours. It's somewhere between three and four, but it's basically uh, based on the temperature of the room and the environment. I'm keeping this in my oven with the light on and I turned on the oven just a little bit and for 30 seconds just to get it a little bit warm so that's going to make it uh, grow a little quicker so anyway that's it for this step okay so it's been another 30 minutes and you can see there's already bubbles and that's because I have it in the oven and uh, it's extra warm so I'm going to wet my left hand and do the next turn. So this is actually turn two. It's been let's see. So you want to just go all the way around okay and then you put it back right in the oven for another 30 minutes. Another half an hour has passed. You can see it's still bubbling. I'm going to wet my hand. Now we're going to do a turn. It's getting softer. It feels more puffy. you got to be more gentle now because you don't really want to pop these bubbles. So I'm not going to stretch it quite as much as I did before. And I just want to go around so every part was actually turned over. So that's about all I have to do. I think because it's so warm in the oven right now, this is really growing fast. Plus I have a little bit of extra starter. So I think I'm going to do only one more turn and then we'll go to the proofing phase. Okay. It's been about four and a half hours. I've done a couple more turns and right now it's definitely ready. It's risen, you know, quite a bit. It's real puffy. So I'm going to do, take the dose scraper here, which is very important to have, so I can get it all out on the counter. No flour necessary here. There we go, we have a big blob of, of dough. I'm 
doing this a little earlier than I normally would do, but I just wanted to get it over with. So, now what you do, I forget what they call these. Do you know? Uh, pastry. What you do is you start folding it onto itself. And you don't want to touch it because this stuff would really stick and that's why this this knife really works well. Okay, so normally what I do is I cut it in half. So this is two loaves of bread here. And uh, measure them so they're the same exact weight. But I'm not going to do that for the sake of time on the movie here. I'm going to just guess. And I'd say probably a little more. So then, basically turn that, turn this one, they're getting too close. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take some flour and get my hands really coated. And I'm going to try and shape it a little bit by sort of turning it into a loaf, a bowl. And you try not to use very much flour. So, so I shape it a little bit and you don't want to have flour on the bottom because you want it to stick to, to be able to give it a good knead. And it's getting sticky to my hands. I'm going to leave that one. Now I'm going to do this one. And actually unstick this a little. Oh, this one's losing it. I need a little more. You just with time you you get the feel of how to work with these and this is the movement you want push pull push pull and it tightens it up and this is like the initial bull shaping and what we're going to do is we're going to cover it and let it set for about 20 minutes and it will even be easier to, to work with do this one more and uh, you can cover it with a bowl so I'm going to take the original bowl and cover this one um, and I'm going to get another one and we'll be back in about 20 minutes okay so it's been about a half an hour and I should have gone a little further, but I didn't, and that's why this is flat. It shouldn't be quite as flat as this, but what I'm going to do is I'm putting flour on the top. Using the pastry knife, I'm going to turn it over, and then I'm going to stretch each side and fold it over to a nice little package. And you try not to, not to have much uh, flour on this. It's still pretty sticky. Flip it over, get some flour on your hands, and do the push pull again. And this, I can tell you, is not really 100% ready because it's a little, little too soft. It would spread out like a pancake if I let it set there. But this makes a, a tighter skin. You can let it set and do this again until it feels good. So then you can keep on doing these folds like this. The knife, knife makes it much easier to deal with.
flip it over. But I'm going to leave these the way these are since I'm going to let them set overnight. It's about 9, 9.15 at night here. And this one I'm going to call ready. So what I'm going to do is I have a proofing basket that I've sprinkled uh, and rubbed uh, a mixture of rice flour and wheat flour, 50-50, so it doesn't stick. And uh, if you didn't have one of these covers for your proofing basket, you could spray oil and then put a coating of uh, wheat bran. Uh, but I like I like this. So all we do one last roll here, and I don't even have to shape it. I'm going to put it upside down, the good side down. It looks kind of not too. <laughs> Not too pretty here, but it's it's gonna work. And then I'm going to cover it with a plastic wrap, and it will rise during the night. So you can go eight to twelve hours now in the refrigerator, and then before you um, you're ready to bake, you take this out about an hour and a half before even maybe two hours. And that's it for this stuff. 8.30 in the morning. And these have been in the refrigerator all night. And you can see there's a lot of bubbles and it rose really nice. And uh, so I have my uh, Romatoff, let's see if you can see this, in the oven. And I had my oven come on an hour ago automatically, so it's ready to go. I'm just waiting for the camera lady to get up so she could uh, shoot what I'm about to do. What I'm about to do is to dump this into the Romatoff, and this is the, the most critical part because if it sticks, it could be a mess. I've had a couple bad days. But it seems to come out pretty good, even when it looks like it's not going to come out. Uh, so we'll see what happens, because this was pretty sticky last night, and I didn't really do a great job uh, uh, with the rice and uh, wheat flour. So this is going to be very interesting. I'm a little bit nervous. Okay, do this quickly. Very hot. I got my gloves on. Put your fingers over the top. Let it drop in. Perfect. I was not nervous, I was just kidding. And this is important, you have to score it so it can rise. It helps helps it rise to its potential. Cover it up, make sure it's sealed nice. And that's this step. I just set a timer for uh, 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, we're just going to take the lid off and then reduce the temperature from 500 degrees to 450. It's going off. I have my assistant taking off the lid so I can do the filming here. Wow. You can see, did a good rise there. Okay, so now we uh, reset the timer for 25 minutes. 25 and then I'm also going to lower the temperature to 450 that's it all right it's been 25 minutes nicely brown I'm gonna leave the bottom in there and we're gonna bring it over And if we're going to go close and listen for the sound of the bread, go even closer. There might be too much noise. 
you can definitely hear it. But uh, okay, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a thermometer, and I'm going to. Whoa! You can hear how crunchy that is. I'm going to check the the temperature. Kind of hard to see. Let me rotate it so it's more. It's two, two twelve, two eleven and a half. I'm sure it's going to go to two. Yeah, two twelve right now. So that's uh, you want it to be anywhere between two o five and two twelve. That that's good. I let it go a little extra to get an extra crunchy crust. So. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now I'm going to do the same for the second loaf. And uh, But for the purpose of this video, uh, I think you have enough information to try this. Enjoy. Okay, it's been a few hours. Uh, you should wait anywhere from two to four hours. They say four hours is the ultimate time. It'll not go stale as fast if you wait to cut it that long after. So we're going to cut see what this looks like you can hear see that crumb it's beautiful you hear the crunch. and you can hear the crunch that's what I call bread <laughs> so it's lunchtime so uh, I'm going to do a part two, but before I do part two, I just wanted to tell you that I got this recipe from the Tartine Book. It's a restaurant in uh, San Francisco, and the guy that wrote the book, it's a great book, and there, there's a lot of details about how to make this style of bread, and um, I highly recommend it. All right, thank you.